Is there anything else you want to add to what we've already discussed? Um, yes. Um, where do we go now? Is there anything else that uh, I, could, I could try that might uh, help? All right, well, let's spend a bit of time sort of discussing that now. Right. Uh, you've given me a lot of really, really good information about how you're already sort of managing, which may tie into some of the options, but maybe there are a few other ones that you could consider as right. well. We can consider together, and then you can decide if you think that would be a good thing for right. you. Okay. Right. So we've sent this to you already. So yes, I hope I've seen you've that. been able to have a good look at that. Yes. Any questions before we start, or do you feel like you've got a good understanding about I've what I've got a reasonable understanding, and I can identify with certain um, aspects of this that um, apply to me. Um, the one that I would like explored, possibly, would be the group support. Okay. So what's really nice about that clip is how the clinician starts with a nice wide open question which gives the patient space and opportunity to then bring up other things that are important to them. Yeah, the clinician is really demonstrating to the patient that she's listened, understood the situation in the story that the patient is telling before then going on to the decision making phase. And what's lovely is that there's enough space there for that individual to state his preference and it's a preference that wouldn't necessarily have come up through any of the previous conversations if he hadn't seen the information about the options that were available to him. And being able to choose and being able to look at all the options and decide which option fits his own preferences and values. And what's clear is that she has sent this decision aid out in the post before this appointment. And I think what's useful about that is that it gives somebody a chance to have a read through and to share the information that they've got with their friends and families to start weighing up the pros and cons of the different options and also to start thinking about the questions or extra information that they need so that they can get the most out of their encounter with their clinician. Some people prefer, rather than being in a one-to-one -one session, to be with other people in a group session. Um, they feel it might give them a bit more structure, get a bit of feedback from other people. Yeah, I think that would be better because in a one-to-one -one situation, I'm likely to be upset every time that it's not going away. Yes. But in a group, you know, there's distractions. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's a really good place to start is to choose the right environment for yourself. The group that we do here that is very much specifically to talk about tinnitus. That's why I'm here. Yes, okay. Yeah. The interesting thing here is that Mel is describing how that service works in practice in that local area to help uh, Jean decide whether it's the right thing for her to do. And it's that sort of local knowledge and extra information that the clinicians really need to supply at this point to help with the sort of decision making phase of the encounter. And it's a fine line, isn't it, between giving the information in a neutral way and saying this is what's available and leading the patient into a pathway that you would really like them to go down.